Ever wondered how to make your Rust programs talk to each other across the network? We'll learn how to build basic TCP and UDP clients and servers using Rust's standard library. That's right, no external dependencies needed. By the end of this video, you'll know how to make two programs talk to each other over the network. Whether it's a chat app, a multiplayer game, or a microservice, these are the fundamental building blocks. So let's get right into it. Before we start coding, let's understand what we're doing conceptually. When we talk about networking in Rust, we're typically referring to the standard net module. It provides all the tools we need to build both TCP and UDP programs. TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, is connection-oriented. It ensures that data arrives reliably and in order. Think of it like making a phone call. There's a connection, both sides can talk, and they make sure nothing is lost. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, on the other hand, is connectionless. It's faster, but less reliable. Think of it like sending letters. Sometimes they get there, sometimes they don't, and they might arrive in any order. We'll start with TCP, then move on to UDP. Let's open up our editor and create a new Rust file called tcpserver.rs. We'll extract our core server logic into a public function. Here's our first example. We use TCP listener bind to create a TCP listener on port 7878. The question mark operator handles potential binding errors. The for stream in listener.incoming line continuously waits for incoming connections. Inside the loop, we accept the connection, stream equals stream question mark, print out the client's address, read the data they sent into a 512-byte buffer, and finally, we send a reply, hello, from server. It's that simple. Now, create another file called tcpclient.rs. This will also contain a public function for its logic. This is our TCP client. It connects to the server's address, sends a message, hello, from client, and then waits for a reply from the server before printing it out. Now, instead of running the server in one terminal and the client in another, we'll use Rust's threading capabilities to run both from a single cargo run command. This is handled in our main.rs file. First, we tell the Rust compiler to include the code from our two files as modules in our main program. We use standard thread spawn to launch our TCP server server main function in the background. Since the server is blocking, waiting for connections, it must run on its own thread so it doesn't freeze the rest of our program. We then run the client logic in the main thread. The client connects, sends data, receives the reply, and then exits. Server handle dot join. This is critical. The main thread pauses here and waits for the server thread to complete. Since our simple server exits after one connection, this allows the server to finish cleanly before the entire program terminates. When you run cargo run, you'll see the complete two-way communication. The execution trace confirms that the program successfully achieved concurrent two-way TCP communication. The server thread bound to the specified port and entered a listening state, accepted the main thread's client connection, read the client's initial message, hello from client, and replied, hello from server, which the client thread then received and printed after confirming its successful connection, demonstrating a complete exchange. We've just built and concurrently executed a simple two-way TCP communication system in Rust. Right now, our server can only handle one client at a time. Once a client connects, no one else can. Let's fix that using threads. We'll modify our server to spawn a new thread for every incoming connection. Here's the breakdown. This is the core change. For every client connection, stream, we spawn a new thread. The move keyword transfers ownership of the stream handle to the new thread. Inside the thread, we enter an infinite loop to continuously read messages from that specific client. When the call to stream.read returns OK, 0, 
it signifies that the client on the other end has gracefully closed its writing side of the connection. So we then immediately break out of our loop to clean up this client's thread. Now, the main thread running server main never blocks inside the loop. It immediately goes back to listener.incoming to wait for the next connection, allowing multiple clients to be handled simultaneously. This is the essence of concurrency in networking. To demonstrate this concurrency, we can't rely on our single client from before. We'll update main.rs to launch the persistent server and then immediately spawn four client threads to hit it all at once. We use thread spawn to launch our indefinitely running server. We don't call join on this handle, letting it run freely in the background. We define num clients as four, and the for loop launches four separate threads, each running our client main logic. This simulates four users connecting simultaneously. The final for handle in client handles loop uses join to ensure the main program waits for all four clients to complete their message exchange before concluding the demo. The main thread finishes, but the entire process stays alive because the server thread is still running, waiting for new connections. When you run cargo run now, you'll see a rush of activity as four clients connect almost instantly and are handled by the server's threads. The order of output from the server and the four clients will be interleaved, proving they are all running in parallel. This is the essence of concurrency in networking, multiple connections handled in parallel. This is how you build a responsive, scalable network service in Rust. Let's make this practical. Imagine a chat server where multiple clients can send messages and receive updates. We can use an arc mutex to store connected clients. Then whenever one client sends a message, we broadcast it to all. That's the idea behind apps like WhatsApp or Discord at the most basic level. Server talk through. Shared state. We bind a TCP listener and create a shared thread safe vector of client addresses and streams. The arc lets us share the list across threads and the outer mutex protects the vector itself. The inner mutex allows us to safely write to each client stream independently. Stream cloning. When a client connects, we call stream.tryclone. This is critical. It gives us an independent OS handle that we push into the shared list for writing. The spawn thread then uses the original stream for reading. This separation prevents deadlocks. Broadcasting. When the thread receives a message, it locks the client list and iterates. We use the retain method. If write all to a client fails, we immediately remove that client from the list, effectively cleaning up broken connections automatically. Now the client. This program allows the user to type lines and sends them to the server while concurrently printing incoming messages from the server. What's happening here is after connecting, we try clone the TCP stream. So one clone can be used in a spawn thread for reading while the main thread writes. The reader thread continuously reads bytes and prints them. The main thread reads lines from STDI and sends them to the server. This gives a familiar chat-like experience in the terminal. Since the server and client are complex interactive programs, we need to run them as separate binaries. To run the client and server separately from the command line, you must configure them as separate binaries in your cargo.toml. We use the bin section to define them as standalone executables. Assuming you are in the root directory of your Rust project, start the server by running this command. Once the server starts, open a new terminal window and run the client. This client will connect and prompt for input. In the server terminal, you will see the client connected. Now, open a third terminal window and run the client again. This client will also connect to chat server. Now we can type messages in any client window and you will see the server relay that message to the other client. We have successfully built a real-time multi-user chat system using concurrent TCP networking in Rust. Now let's look at UDP, which is faster but doesn't guarantee delivery. UDP is connectionless, meaning there's no handshake, no error checking, and no guarantee that your packets, or datagrams will arrive or arrive in the right order. Why use it? Because it's fast. It's perfect for applications like games, video streaming, or real-time updates where speed matters more than absolute reliability. Here's a simple UDP server. 
notice how different the code is. There's no TCP listener or incoming loop. Server talk through. We simply bind to a specific address and port, 8080. This creates the socket where we'll listen for datagrams. The server enters an infinite loop ready for action. Socket dat receive from. This is the heart of UDP listening. It blocks, waiting for an incoming packet. When a packet arrives, it returns the length, len, of the data and the source address, address, of the sender. Socket.sendTo. To reply, we use sendTo explicitly specifying the sender's address, address, obtained in the previous step. And here's the client. It's much simpler than its TCP counterpart. Client talk through. We use UDP socket bind. We bind to the local machine, but use port zero. This tells the operating system to automatically select an available ephemeral port for us. Socket.connect. This might sound contradictory, but in UDP, connect doesn't establish a connection. It just sets the default destination address for future send and receive calls on this socket. Socket.send. We fire our datagram off to the destination address we just set. Socket.receive. We block and wait for a reply from the server. Run both and you'll see the messages fly instantly. No connection, no waiting, just packets sent back and forth. You've now seen both sides of the coin. Reliable, stateful TCP and fast, connectionless UDP. Let's make it even more real world. Imagine we want to send a file from one machine to another. Here's a super simplified version of a file sender and receiver. For this to work, you'll need a file named data.txt in your project directory for the sender to read. This program reads the file in chunks and streams it over the network. Sender talk through. We open the file data.txt and establish the TCP stream connection to the receiver. We use a loop to read the file in one kilobyte chunks into our buffer. Inside the loop, we call file.read and then immediately call stream.write all to push that chunk onto the network. When file.read returns zero, we know we've reached the end of the file and we break the loop, signaling the end of the transfer. This program listens for the connection, accepts it and streams the incoming network data directly into a new file. Receiver talk through. The receiver binds a TCP listener and blocks on listener.accept, waiting for the sender to connect. Once connected, we create a new file called received.txt. We enter a loop where we block on stream.read. This waits for the next chunk of data from the network. When the sender finishes sending the file and closes its side of the connection, Stream.read returns zero bytes. This is the signal that the transfer is complete. And we break the loop. All the data received is reliably written to received.txt. And that's how file transfer protocols like FTP work at a fundamental level. The guaranteed ordered delivery of TCP makes it ideal for data integrity. Rust networking capabilities through standard net are powerful and safe. But for more advanced use cases like async networking, you can use frameworks like Tokyo or Small to make things more efficient. So the next time you're building a distributed system, multiplayer game, or web backend, remember, it all starts with understanding how client and servers talk using simple TCP and UDP sockets. If you enjoyed this session, share it with your developer friends.